If you've been on the hunt for that perfect film emulation, you're not alone. Some options to achieve that perfect look can be equally, if not more expensive than DaVinci Resolve. Either that, or they turn your 8-bit footage into a hot mess. In this video I'll show you how I will create realistic and subtle film emulation in DaVinci Resolve. I'll take you through the step-by-step -step process of how I use this power grade and why I chose to do it in certain ways. Now let's get into it. So as you can see I have a couple clips in my timeline. I have a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K shot right here. Some S-Log 3 shots of skin tones to show you various different features. A walking shot, an indoor shot with natural light. So let's start off with the Blackmagic shot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is apply the color grade. Gonna go into my power grade section, hover over the power grade, either click apply grade or hover over it and click the middle mouse button. Now it's applied, you can close this window. As you can see it already looks quite good, but there are gamma issues. This is because it was shot in Gen 4 Black Dead Magic design film. So we're gonna go into the first CST, open it up, Black Magic Design Pocket 4K Film Gen 4. Same thing for the gamma, and this will make things very flat. But that's alright, we can always add more contrast. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of contrast. We're gonna go into the push and pull node, Click on this one and just add a little bit more contrast. Because we're using the push and pull also as an exposure tool, you can see it becomes way too bright. So what we do is we pull this to the right until we see a nice cinematic exposure such as this. As you can see, we go from this to this. It already is a very nice looking cinematic shot. But in my opinion, it might be a little bit flat. So what we can do is go into the low nodes, put this at minus 24, for example. It's a bit darker, but it looks much nicer. So we're gonna brighten it up slightly again by pushing this one to the left, and there it is. That's a very nice shot in my opinion. So what we're gonna do to make it a little bit wider or greener, we want that cinematic look. We click on white balance. We're not gonna go here. We're gonna click on effects. In effects, you'll find chromatic adaptation applied to this node. Of course, you can always use these, uh, use the offset wheel, temperature slider, or whatever way you prefer in the power grade, as long as it's on the same node. I prefer using this method for this shot, for example, so I'm gonna be using it. So let's say you want a little bit of a warmer look. You can just slide this to the left. I meant to say right there, but we're sliding it to the right. 7700 looks nice. Now it gives you this cinematic green look. Although I would prefer it to be a little bit pinker, for example. So we're gonna push this towards magenta again. And there we go. We get a warmer cinematic look. You see the less blues in the shot, but yet the skin tones stay at the same place. If we go to the waveform vector scope, we can see the skin tones are right on the line. Although I'm gonna push them over slightly away from red in this shot, because you can see they're a little bit heavy on the red side. So we're gonna go to gamma here, probably and push them a little bit more towards green. And there we go. Now the skin tones are lined up a little bit nicer on the green side. And we go from this to this. So this is the basics of how you use the power grade. Now I'm gonna explain in a deeper sense of how it actually works and why I made certain decisions. So we're first gonna go over the first section and I'm gonna to explain to you why I did it this way. These nodes might speak for themselves. As you can see, they affect the highlights, optimizing dynamic range, low effects of shadows, mid is for you to adjust the mid tones if you want to. White balance, it was a preference, use this up here and you can use the other one if you still want to. The CST, as self-explanatory, I converted it to ARRI because I prefer working in the ARRI color space and it gives a very nice result. The push and pull, now this is an interesting one. Instead of using actual exposure in the power grade, you should be using this node. The reason you should be using this node is because you don't shift the exposure up and down, like the overall brightness of an image, you're shifting the dynamic range. And I'll explain this here. Because we are using the pivot here, you'll notice on the scopes right here, on the, on the, effect, on the waveforms, you'll notice as soon as we pivot it to the left, the highlights and the very deep shadows don't really change. So you are preserving your dynamic range, but upping your exposure, mimicking pushing and pulling in film. 
So we're gonna put it to a nice value here. That looks very nice. Quickly change the white balance, push it up by a thousand Kelvin. Me, let's make it a little bit less green. And there we go, we go from this to this. So there you go. This is why I chose the basic adjustments here. Now second, we're gonna be looking at the look section and especially the skin tones. As you can see, we have a very nice skin tone. And there are two reasons to this why this power grade creates these nice natural yet vibrant and deep skin tones. As you can see, they're perfectly lined up on the factor scope. We can zoom in a little bit by holding Alt and scrolling. So the two nodes that make the skin tones look really nice are the density one and the cyan one. First, I'm gonna show you the density one. First, I'm gonna show you what happens when you turn off the density one. This is crazy. As soon as we turn it off, boom. The shot becomes bright, less cinematic because all the colors are less deep. So the way I did this is using the color warper and putting every single dot on a certain value. So the more saturated the color becomes, the darker it becomes. And the less saturated the color becomes, the brighter it is. This creates a process that also happens in real film called subtractive color. All digital sensors have additive color, which does the opposite. It creates a little bit of a brighter look to it, which I personally don't really like. So let's turn it on again and see the difference. Boom. On the waveform you'll also see that as soon as you change it, it becomes a lot brighter, yet it doesn't start clipping or breaking apart. And the second reason the skin tones look so good is because of all the look nodes I have. And especially the cyan note. As soon as I turn it off you'll see, boom. This is what you get. You get a warm look in the highlights, very red, and overall a little bit less cinematic. So I use the curves in this note to create a very complicated curve that bends the highlights and all the colors to the perfect cinematic look, in my opinion. It's based upon the Porta 400 look. Some people might like, but overall it's really popular. And in my opinion, it also looks really realistic without looking gimmicky like some other power grades out there. As you can see, as soon as I turn it back on, boom. Now it might look a little bit cold in the beginning, but if you look over it, it looks very nice. The skin tones look nice. You see the highlights on the skin tones are more white instead of red. So now I'm going to be looking at the third section, which is this section here. In here we have the CST out and mostly effects that should be after the CST, in my opinion. It automatically gets converted to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. You can choose a different output format if you would like. Next note is a soft highlights note. As you can see, it slightly softens the highlights. The way I did this is with a mask and some blur. Next up, we have a halation node. In my settings, the halation is literally just a little bit of a glow on the highlights to get that compressed highlight look. But you can turn it into actual halation if you want to by going into the halation node, resetting the settings to create the classic halation outline on your footage. I prefer a more clean look halation wise, but that's up to you. Then we have another note, which is dirt. This adds a little bit of changing dirt to your footage and it just looks nice. After that, we have grain, which you can turn on and off for how you like it. But since it's film emulation, I very much assume you like to have it turned on. Last little note that's interesting is the clean note. Cleans up your shadows and your highlights. Here I will show you what it does. Curve on the shadows and a curve on the highlights. Now we turn it off. You'll see that this becomes way brighter and the shadows are a bit blue. Your monitor might not show it, but they really are. You can see here in the shadows, there's a lot of red here, which is from this thing. And also some other colors. You can click clean and you can see it moves it up to the first stripe and it cleans up the shadows, making the shot a lot more cinematic and giving it some extra contrast. So I quickly tracked in three 8-bit shots in our timeline. Shot on the A7 III at HLG3 at 1600 to 3200 ISO. And I'm gonna show you why my power grade works really well on 8-bit footage and the results are stunning. So we're gonna start with this shot. We're gonna grab it, find a nice frame. Just walking around. Here I am in the light, it looks really nice. Let's first apply the grade. And first off, you're gonna say, hey, yeah, what the f are you doing? You don't know what you're talking about. I would agree with you if I see this, but first we're gonna change the CST to the right settings. We're gonna put s log 3 to Rec. 7, to Rec 2020, not 709 and then to Rec 2100 scene. And there we go. You would still think, I don't know what the f I'm doing. So we're gonna go to the push and pull. We're gonna go here. We're gonna make it darker. Just hang in with, there with me. You're gonna love it after this. 
exposure looks nice, highlights look nice, shadows look nice, a lot of dynamic range. And now we're gonna get into cool stuff. First, gonna make it colder. You'll think, what the actual f is this? It looks still looks ugly. But this shot was not shot in the correct white balance. So we can just push it and push it and push it all the way towards green without breaking the footage. You can keep the skin tones in a nice space while pushing it all the way to this green cinematic look. And it will still look fine. Let's zoom in, let's turn off the dirt and the grain. Of course you'll see some artifacts, but look. There are pretty much no artifacts, except for a little bit of cluttering after zooming in at over 100%, 200% here even. And in the shadows, they also look a little bit of artifacting here, but overall it's super clean. So now let's take it to a different shot. This one, for example, so we'll make it warm again. And actually we're gonna push it towards warm a little bit. We're gonna make it a little bit less green. And there we go. Look at that color. This is that cinematic color you can find in movies like the Batman. And I absolutely love it. Now if we turn off the grain and dirt, there are very minimal artifacts besides some noise. And you can very easily clean this up by adding a noise reduction node in front of this node tree. Now we have one more shot with a lot of light going on, which is this one. And as you can see, when you copy and paste it to it, it looks absolutely fine. Even the reds, even the reds after using the density node, still look fine. I would say they look better than before, as you can see. And here in these kinds of shots, the clean note is also very important. As you can see here, once you click it, it becomes super blue in the dark areas. And you don't want that. You want to get rid of that color. And as you can see, it becomes a straight line and it looks nice and cinematic and punchy. So that was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to use code LAUNCH20 at checkout to get a 20% discount on my power grade. And I'll see you all in the next time. Take care.